All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. As Coach Monero said, uh, I am kind of off the field a little bit now. I've been running a website for a couple years now and trying to pass on the finer points of the game. Um, and as Coach Monero said, when it comes to defense, uh, that is something that when I coach, that is probably the most lacking. Uh, it seems like everybody can hit because when you go to the, the batting cages, nobody puts a quarter in or a token in to get 10 ground balls. They all want to hit. And so when they get to the high school, we get a lot of good hitters. But the problem is, where do you put them? And I always tell guys at the beginning of the year, I say, you know what, there's nine positions on the field. So if you can catch and throw, we, you have nine chances to play. If all you can do is hit, then there's only one DH on a team. And so your odds go up dramatically if you can catch and throw. So as Coach Monero said, tonight we're going to stick with the very basics. Uh, and so I'm going to talk primarily tonight about these five things. Because uh, when I was thinking about catching and throwing, I think, well, what can I whittle it down to? And so I came up with these five things, and so I'm going to try to pass on uh, uh, some of that stuff to you uh, just to give everybody a foundation. Now, the first one is palms facing. And this is something that we have gotten away from in baseball because the gloves have gotten so good. In the olden days, and I, I wish I would have remembered to bring one, but in the olden days, gloves were not much different than this paddle here, okay? And you remember some of the old antique gloves. And if you're using this type of glove or a paddle, uh, you are forced to catch the ball with your palms facing each other. You can't catch a ball like this because it's going to bounce off, okay? However, with the brand new gloves, kids can get away with catching the ball like this. And if you watch kids play catch a lot, you will see them often just catch the ball like this. And that is really setting themselves up for some bad habits because they're getting away from that first one there, which means palms facing. Anytime I'm catching a baseball, if it is above my waist, I'm going to high five the ball. And my other hand goes right in front here and I'm, my palms are facing each other. And from here, it's just around. A ground ball is here with my palms facing, out to the side, and a pop-up. So all catching should involve two palms facing each other. The only exception is a ball that's hit or thrown over here, and then I'm going to have to backhand the ball. But pretty much, no matter what position I play, uh, in catching the ball with two hands, it's going to involve two palms facing each other. And that's a basic skill that even kids that we see at the high school level have not mastered. A lot of it, it is because of that glove, and part of it is just not being taught uh, the proper way of catching with palms facing each other. The next one is step to the ball. Once kids get a hang of catching the ball correctly and they can do it safely, high-fiving it above their waist, low-fiving it above their waist, and the safety factor is gone, the next uh, step is to get them to move to the ball a little bit more. And it becomes more and more important for fielders to step to the ball instead of just waiting for the ball to come to them. Because if you think about it, as you get older, the game gets faster. And if I wait and square up to my target and the guy catches the ball, now I have to waste time starting and throwing. Well, if I can take care of some of that before I catch the ball, it's going to allow me to catch the ball and throw it more quickly. And that's where step to the ball comes in. Now, in almost every aspect of baseball, we are always going to step to the ball with the foot that is on my glove side. So if I'm right-handed, my glove's going to be on my left hand. And so every time I catch the ball, I want to try to step to the ball with my left foot. That is going to set me up for a better and a quicker turn and a throw. If I did not step to the ball and I just caught, I would have to waste time getting started before I throw. Well, if I step to the ball, I'm already getting started. So it's one less thing I have to do after I catch the ball. So palms facing each other on the catch and stepping to the ball with my glove side foot is going to set me up for a lot better footwork and much better transition from catching to throwing. The next one is front side closed. And this is something that a lot of kids are taught from a young age, and it's because it's correct, that after we catch the ball, we want to make sure I turn my front side completely closed towards my target. Now, we have a set of eyes, okay? 
but I tell little kids, you also have what are called throwing eyes. And the throwing eyes are on the back of my elbow, on the outside of my shoulder, on the outside of my hip, the outside of my knee, and the outside of my foot. And so I tell little kids, when you catch the ball and turn sideways, get all your throwing eyes facing the target. Your eyes on your head, the eyes on the back of your elbow, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the foot. If I can point all my throwing eyes at my target, now when I open up the throw, I'm going to have a lot more on my throw. One of the problems that kids can get away with when they're younger and playing on the smaller fields is they don't have to turn very much because their throws aren't very long. And so you'll see kids just step and throw and keep that front side open. As they get older, the game gets faster, the fields get bigger, and if they haven't mastered getting use out of their entire midsection, which is the strongest part of our body, they're going to be putting more stress on their arm. And when they start to move to the bigger fields and they now cannot reach their target, their mind doesn't say, improve my mechanics. Their mind says, throw the ball harder. And so they're using their bad mechanics and now throwing harder, which puts more strain on their arm. And that's where we see injuries. And that's why, I think I saw a stat the other day, about 80% of the kids who start playing baseball in the little leagues never in their life get a chance to play on a regulation field. And I think that's sad. Uh, and a lot of it is because they have not learned the proper throwing mechanics so that they can keep up with the size of the fields. The next one is thumbs down. Now, I will say as a coach, I've, I've had a lot of private lessons that I've given. I've spent countless amount of hours working with kids. Probably the toughest thing to fix with young kids is how they throw the baseball. If they don't throw the ball correctly by a certain age, there really is not much that you can do. It takes a tremendous amount of work on your part, on the kid's part, and many times it just doesn't fix itself. So the quicker we can get kids to do number four, the better. And that is thumbs down. When I do catch the ball and I do turn and point those throwing eyes at my target, at some point my hands are going to have to separate. And if I use a ball here, when my hands do separate, you want to think of it as both thumbs point down when my hands separate. Okay? So if I turn, my thumb on my glove and my throwing hand turn down. Now the reason why that's important is because when the ball is in this position with my thumb down, when it exits the glove, it's going to set my arm up for a proper path. You've probably seen it, you may not have noticed it, but I know you've seen it. With kids, will take the ball to the glove and their hand does this. Their hand comes under the ball and their thumb is facing upward. Now when I throw the ball, it's like throwing a shot put. And you can see all the strain is across my shoulder here. Okay, and um, that's when the arm injuries occur when they get to the bigger fields. So if they separate their hands and their thumbs are down, my fingers are in between the ball and my head, and that's going to set me up for a better throw. It's going to take some strain off my shoulder, it's going to put some of it on my elbow, but it's going to put a lot of it on my wrist. My wrist is a very flexible joint. My elbow is only made to work like this. My shoulder is really only made to do this but my wrist can go in any direction. So the more I use my wrist, the less I have to use my elbow, and the less I have to use my shoulder. And it starts with thumbs down, so I can use that wrist and get that snap and create a better arm path when I throw. So that's a really important one that we need to start teaching kids at a very young age, because as I said, if they get in the habit of doing this, it's a very difficult thing to fix once they get older. The last one there is the elbow and the head. When I say elbow, I mean you're throwing elbow. You want to make sure, and this is something that is very easy to see when you're watching kids play catch, their throwing elbow should always be at shoulder level or higher. You never want to see their elbow come below their shoulder because they're going to be putting a tremendous amount of more stress on their elbow when that happens. Now, a lot of little kids can get away with that on the small fields. But again, that's one of those things when they get to the larger fields, their arm is just not going to handle that stress. So the elbow is making sure the elbow is up. Whether they're throwing straight over the top or anywhere down here, my elbow is at or above my throwing shoulder, and they're okay. The head there. I want to make sure when, when the kids are playing catch and in baseball, 
the eyes are meant to be level. Anytime I tilt my head, I have poor vision. So I don't care if we're hitting, we don't want the heads to tilt. If we're pitching, we don't want their heads to tilt. So when we're playing catch and throwing, it's eyes level and our head is relatively still. We don't want the heads in this position here. That's gonna help with accuracy. So palms facing is gonna help with catching, give them more flexibility, two hands to properly catch the ball. Step to the ball is gonna get their momentum going so that they can keep up with the pace of the game a little bit better. Front side close is gonna give them the power of their throw because they're gonna utilize the midsection, the strongest muscles in my body, and take some of the stress away from my arm. Thumbs down is gonna set their arm on a correct path and allow them to use their very flexible wrist when they throw. And the last one there, their elbow, keep the elbow above the shoulder and the eyes level, and that will give them power and accuracy. Okay guys, well that's the five things I have for you. Uh, certainly there's a lot more you can get into, but if kids are doing those five things, that's gonna set them off on a very good foundation for catching and throwing.